A lot of Brunswick stew has been cooked near the Roanoke River. In his day, Tom Green's maternal grandfather cooked most of the stews around Scotland Neck, a Halifax County town named for a particular bend in the Roanoke. He taught Daddy how to cook stews, and Daddy picked it up and continued to do the same thing. Uh, cook for all the events here again in time, and also developed a, a sideline stew business on Saturdays. He had about 100 customers, and so every Saturday morning we rolled out about 5 o'clock, opened cans and built, built a fire under the pot and started cooking a stew. My brother and both of my sisters uh, cooked stews. They were both older than me. All of them were cooking them before I was cooking them. And I have been cooking them for about... 52 years. For these three generations and a lot longer, cooking a stew has always been the occasion for folks to gather around. In this case, at a riverside cabin. Where else? We're cooking in an iron pot over a wood fire. What else? Tomatoes, butter beans, chicken and chicken stock, corn and flavorings. Green is as strict about what goes in his stews as he is open to practically anyone who shows up to observe and to eat. He likes potatoes and onions when other people include them in their stew, but he doesn't. Tradition. Only one ingredient is added at a time. Tomatoes? First you squeeze and crush them by hand prior to bringing them to a hard boil. Tomatoes are the most dominant part of a stew. Right, I mean, right on that lip. You, you just start me. pouring. You pour and I'll get it right. Go ahead. Don't let it come. Don't let it come out. Yeah, you're doing fine. Don't let it scald you. That steam will get you. Good man, good job. You cook the tomatoes to a hard boil and hard boil them for 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the tomatoes, to break them down and uh, make them blend better in the stew. And we think it makes about a stew. When I was little, I was the proudest girl in town because my daddy knew how to cook the stew. And it was always so much fun. There were people and it was all about camaraderie and it was it was exciting. While the tomatoes are cooking down someone is pouring off and discarding the liquid in the butter beans and corn. Too tinny tasting Green says. So we mash up some of the beans and then we also keep some whole. This gives it a lot of volume, some density to the stew and that's one of the secrets of the Brunswick stew. Green mashes up fully three quarters of the butter beans for thickening and background. The mashed and whole beans join the tomatoes, the fire is built back up to bring the pot back to a boil, and there's another half hour or so of hard boiling and stirring. Some Brunswick stew cooks do things in a slightly different order, but there's no real arguing about who's right. They're all good, it's just everybody's got their own way they want to do their own stew, but they're all good. And after that you put in the chicken stock, which has a tendency to slow the stew down and you bring it, bring it back up to a rolling bowl. I'm a great bunch stew lover. And Tom's father, George Green, uh, cooked bunch stew for the church. And I, uh, Buck and Tom have cooked down through the years. His brother, yeah. And Tom's brother, jo uh, right. Buck. All three of them are great bunch of stew cookers, but right. I can tell the difference between Tom's and Buck's and his, George did first. And then you add your chicken. All right, this may come as a shock to some of you, but here's the perspective of someone with the benefit of a hundred years of chicken simmering and stew cooking right, experience. Dad. One of the greatest inventions in chicken in cooking a Brundrick stew is canned and processed chicken that's already been cleaned, taken off the bone. Beautiful meat. You don't have to cook it in a cast iron pot like you used to do years ago. Slaving over it, the results are wonderful. Me? If I'm cooking a few quarts of Brunswick stew, yeah, I'll simmer and debone a whole chicken, maybe a free-range chicken to be able to taste any difference from the boned product in the finished stew. If I'm making 80 quarts and enjoying my friends, though, I'm falling in line behind the deeply experienced Mr. Green. Give the chicken a full half-hour boil, and then the corn goes in last. Right. full of starch, sugar, and potential for sticking. So you have to stay, you have to be aggressive with your stirring. Somebody has to know what they're doing. You can ruin a stew at that point if you're not careful. And when you get the corn in at the last, 
I bring it to a rolling boil again. Green uses 80% cream style corn, 20% shoe peg corn. And then all that's left is the seasoning, salt and pepper, several sticks of butter, a few handfuls of sugar, all pretty much to taste. There are those who think a Brunswick stew has to cook slowly over many hours, not Tom Green. We cook a stew fast. We get as much stew as we can and bring it to a boil. And uh, which is dangerous because you've really got to work hard while you're doing it. But when you do that, you, uh, you evaporate a lot of the moisture out of stew, which is the purpose of cooking a long time anyway. You can really only know the stew is ready when you cool some down enough for people to take part in the ritual of sampling. People are catching up all over the country. These food shows and everything are, are really, everybody's in, in enjoying gathering to cook. And if you gather to cook, you have to have a focal point. It's easy to stand around a stew. You can gather your family around you doing it. From the time the first match was lit until the stew was pronounced finished and ready to serve, five hours. By then, some observers have sampled and moved on, and other diners have shown up. What's best to serve with it? Around these parts, anyway, there's one common answer. It's really only in northeastern North Carolina that barbecue and Brunswick stew are considered to go so well together. They really weren't designed to go together, it's just that they were both made for special occasions. People became used to the idea of getting them side by side on their plate at special occasions. And they discovered they really tasted fabulous together. Mm. A stew is an excuse to get together with family and friends and have a party. What could be more fun than cooking a stew with the kids around, a lot of people looking at the river? I don't think it gets any better than this. Brunswick Stew practically personifies working and socializing together. For that reason alone, it remains one of our most cherished comfort foods.